Welcome to the show, show a show about a show where we show you the shows that we're going to show you on the show. Show. The show show. Chad and I, we have this spectacular adventure and we get to travel wherever we choose. We buy tickets and we fly. We actually got to sit down with a guy named Stephen Shallowitz and he has a really unique perspective. He has a show called The One Way Ticket Show and he gets fabulous personas to sit down with him and he asks him one simple question. If I could give you one ticket, a one-way ticket to anywhere, anytime, any place, where can you go? And he has fascinating guests and fascinating answers. This is Stephen Shalowitz. Our guest today is Stephen Shalowitz, the host of the One Way Ticket Show, which is a great place to find great conversation, but it's also got incredible ideas and concepts. Well, I'm so glad to have the opportunity to chat with you about uh, the One Way Ticket Show, about travel, about food, and about so many other topics, because you're also a jack of all trades, too. I'm a jack of all running my mouth is my <laughs> one trade, but I seem to be coasting on it pretty darn well. Well, listen, you got to start somewhere, right? But thanks for bringing up my The One Way Ticket Show, because it's been a love and passion of mine for eight years. I started it back in 2012, and the premise of the show is really simple. As the name suggests, I explore with high-profile and fascinating people where they'd go if given a one-way ticket, but the caveat is there's no coming back. And destinations, get this, can be in the past, present, future, real imaginary, or even a state of mind. And I've had some outstanding, outstanding guests, everyone from uh, law professor Alan Dershowitz to Dick Cavett, who's been a two-time guest, Mo Rocca, Charles Osgood, Ian Bremmer. I had fashion guru Tim Gunn, for example, on the show. Where would Dick Cavett go in this ever-expanding universe? So Dick wanted his one-way ticket to have a meal for eternity with Oscar Wilde at Oscar Wilde's favorite London pub or the Savoy Hotel dining room. So it's been an interesting exercise for my guests to go through. And it's funny because some guests will say, you know what, Stephen, immediately I know where I wanted to go. Okay, so Alan Dershowitz, for example, said that he wanted his one-way ticket to 1932 Germany to avert the Holocaust. And I follow it up with why, what you would do there, what you would take with you, who would you take with you, what would you hope to get out of the experience. It's a way for my guests to show part of their personalities that in some cases really talk to who they are. In addition to the one-way ticket show, which I do, I also produce and host Israel Cast for Jewish National Fund USA. And on that program, we've had a number of chefs, Jamie Geller, for example, whom I love. And we also had, by the way, uh, Susie Fishbein. And the interesting conversation that I've had with all of them is not only in terms of Jewish cuisine, but also in terms of um, the opportunities that traditional Jewish food offers. Uh, for those that have adopted a plant-based diet. Where can somebody find uh, more information about you? Uh, on Instagram, at Stephen Shalowitz. Same on Twitter, same on Facebook, and also they can find me at theonewaytickethow.com. And then they can also find it uh, on iTunes. They can find Israel Cast, of course, wherever they get their podcast. Thank you, Stephen Shalowitz. <laughs> Judd, if I were to ask you, what is your one-way ticket? Where would you be going? I don't know. There's so many choices about maybe Morocco. A one-way ticket to Morocco? Yeah. You don't want to come back? I'll, fi I'll, figure, I'll figure out a way to come back. I'll hitchhike. There you go. Hey, we're still here. We're still hanging out. I got my main man, Judd. Judd and I talk a lot about food, and oftentimes we discuss the things that really we grew up with that are just so fundamental to keeping kosher in the United States. And we decided to do a whole new segment about it. This is called Kosher Food Hall of Fame. <laughs> what are the rules of Kosher Food Hall of Fame? Things that we grew up with, things that are iconic, and things that, you know, they're just, they can't be replaced. Today, I'm gonna to talk about an icon, and these are love it or hate it. Love it or hate it potato chips. I first discovered them when I was about seven or eight, going into the kosher bodega in Chicago on the way to Detroit, Michigan. Couldn't eat them in the car because they were hummets. All right, here we go. My entry, Kosher Food Hall of Fame. Uh, the one, the only. Uh, the ketchup chip. 
Judd has a weird thing about ketchup, so I'm not gonna foist these on him. No foist. But Hare's ketchup chips are significant to me. And the ketchup chip to me was my first kapow of what flavor chips could really be. Why is it significant? The product looks the same. Hey, when you got a chip that had this much coverage, you knew you were in, you were in, you were in good shape. I don't know why I never even had this before. Maybe I should Yeah, try. you should try that. They don't taste like ketchup. It's amazing. I used to dip chips in ketchup. And before you look at me like I'm crazy, you do that with french fries, okay? <laughs> so there's, this is not an illogical step. And to me, this has always been my, my special, like my premier chip flavor, if you're gonna ask me ketchup chips, all the way, because when I was seven, I found them in a random store in Chicago. Here we go, Judd, give it a shot. Okay. Yeah. We had this fantastic opportunity to show up at some rando people's houses where they were hosting a kosher cookbook club where they all went through, was it Flashix Magazine? One of the Flashix Magazine. They went, all went through the Flashix Magazine and everybody did why? They picked one item, for, uh, one recipe from the magazine to uh, do in their own way. There was a lot of people, she's a lot of food, a lot of recipes. Here's what went on. Sometimes rolling through the streets of Miami, living the hard life of eating in restaurants, you get a call. There's a house party, you wanna come. Mm, maybe I wanna go to a house party, give me some deets, but it's going down. Here's the deets. There is a group of food enthusiasts here in Miami. They've decided to get a group together of some kosher food enthusiasts and they're gonna pick their favorite cookbook or their favorite compendium of recipes and they are going to throw a party, talk about how they made it. They have decided to use the recipes out of Fleischick's magazine. They've taken all the recipes, they divvied it out, the 30 people, 30 recipes, potluck style. This is what, is a cookbook get together? Right, Tell so me about it. We get together, we split up the recipes and we make a potluck dinner like this. You follow it to a T, there's yes, no real yes, deviation. In the world where everything has switched to a digital format, the Jewish kosher keeping cookbook market is stronger than ever because we have Shabbos. We have a party, two parties every weekend to really establish and display what we're learning from that text. I made the Hamish of Lincoln. Um, very, very, very Hamish, which means very oniony, very fatty, but there's no way you can pass it up. It is the most delicious. delicious thing. And I made the sous vide chuck roast with the arugula pesto. It was great to see people's reactions to how they made the dish, just like the recipe called for, and seeing how that came out. It was just a lot of fun being with everyone and being here and enjoying. I guess what you get out of this, aside from the amazing company and the amazing food, is that now I get a whole new Shabbos menu to try out. Yeah, for sure. And, I, and we know that it's good because we've, we've already tasted it. tasted it. Well, this is great. I know everybody here. So it's just fun. It's casual. You show up, you sit down, you eat. It was a very nice event. You know, we can all uh, give ourselves uh, good constructive criticism about the recipes. It was amazing to be able to taste all the different flavors from all the different things that, you know, that we all made here. It was an awesome event. It really was. Look at this. How amazing is this? Look at all our friends. We're just hanging out. We're having a great time. We're hoping to do this four to six times a year. And, um, I think we're gonna call this the Stuff Your Face Club. It's so very exciting to see a diverse crowd of people who can get together in, and just cook, have a good time, and learn stuff, and, and use the tools that are available to us. Yes. Trivia! Trivia! Trivia. What is my go-to item on a Chinese restaurant? Congratulations to a lot of you guys who did get this one. We made it easy for you. Good job. Good job. That's right. Super duper. It is the sesame chicken. Mm -hmm. Oh, sesame chicken. Mm. It is the sesame chicken. Mm. Mm. Yeah, he's my sesame chicken. You know the drill. This week's this week's trivia question. I'll make it easy for you. I've even cooked it on camera multiple times. 
Some in restaurants, some out of restaurants. This is my favorite Middle Eastern kind of dessert. It's, it's heavy on the dairy. I definitely know it. I know I can't answer, but I definitely know it. Hot and crunchy, baby. Oh, no, I want it. Oh, you know you want it. Mm. This has been The Show Show. Thanks for watching. Like, share, comment, you know, all that jazz.